Hi everyone and welcome to the Juggling Balls YouTube channel. I'm your host Stuart and today we're going to be talking about the latest news that's come out today. Not about the Super League, I've already done enough ranting and in a uh, contrasting, conflicting contradictions in my head <laughs> about that. Um, no, today we're going to be talking about Jose Mourinho sacking at Spurs. Whether I'm not surprised by it, um, what I think the reasoning might be. Um, also going into why it's happened um, looking back at the sort of recent history of the season for Spurs and as to why we've got to the place that we're at and yeah if you enjoy it um, you know please give us a like um, and share and subscribe and let me down know down in the comments who you think is going to replace Reno, Um because obviously that's going to be a big question now as to who that's going to be and where Spurs go next really with all the Super League nonsense that's going on at the moment because that's what it is, it's just utter nonsense. But yeah, and we'll get started with the discussion now, I suppose. Um, so yeah, as of this morning, Mourinho's been sacked by Spurs. Probably not that big a surprise to many people who follow football or follow Mourinho or even follow Spurs. A, with the performances. B, with how Mourinho's general demeanour has been. Um, and C, how he's been talking more negatively the past few weeks to month. Um, but yeah, again, it's the typical Mourinho cycle. They start off well, they have a bit of a slump, he gets grumpy about it, he's not very happy with how people react in the press, and it just snowballs from there. And as of this morning, after the news of the European Super League coming out, um, he's been sacked. Now, there's lots of rumours swirling around as to why that is, and it's not exactly clear if he was objecting to the Super League but there are reports going around now that he didn't want to take training this morning and he refused to take it, uh, which kind of forced Daniel Levy's hand, um, which kind of would fit in with the fact that it's a bit of a surprise he's been sacked six days before the cup final and the chance for them to win their first trophy in over, I think it's 10 years. Um, so yeah, it's a bit of a strange one, um, not least because there's a trophy on the line, but also with all the changes that are potentially coming up this summer, or in the next year or two, you'd probably think you'd probably want to keep the same manager in, and then if you need to bring a new guy in, potentially bring them in later? I don't know. I, again, Daniel Levy runs his clubs to his own drum. It's not really a surprise that we're at this point. Um, but yeah, I mean, Spurs have got rid of another manager. He was supposed to come in and galvanise them. I don't know if it says much about Mourinho that he's been sacked with this squad, or if it just confirms really what we knew about Tottenham, which was, as Mourinho has said in the past, that without Son and Kane, Tottenham aren't anywhere near the top four. And I think that's been very much the case. I think, again, you've seen what it's been like with Harry Kane out being out for large chunks, and he's, we were there again. Um, he's been in and out with injuries he's had another ankle injury recently and obviously there's question marks if he's going to play again this season or if he's going to be you know even available for the Euros which obviously as an England fan or even just as a Spurs fan you hope he's going to be fit enough for the run-in and for the remainder of the season if he can be but I don't think he's going to be with the ankle injuries he's had in the past um, and then it's just a question of how quickly does he come back and when he comes back is he going to be in the right route to play for Spurs um, because there's been rumours start to circulate, circulate these past couple of weeks that if Spurs don't get in the Champions League, which as each game goes by, it looks ever, ever more likely um, that that's not going to be the case, that Kane wants out and he's not afraid to go to another Premier League club. Now, with the Super League again coming in to play these past 24 hours, it really is a big question as to whether or not it's going to be a Premier League club he gets to go to. Um because if the six teams are involved from the Premier League get kicked out, is Kane going to want to go to a lower Premier League club? Well, not going to be lower if the six clubs get kicked out, but lower in terms of standing in the overall European Champions League picture. Um, but again, that's another question that's been thrown up by the Super League, is how much will it affect the Champions League? And again, that that is unknown at this point, but if all things were to stay the same for the next season or two, you would imagine Kane wants to try to give it as good a go as possible to get trophies and get in the Champions League and see where he's at. And who knows at this point where 
things are going to lie. But the question still remains as to who can exactly afford Harry Kane. Now, remember, we are dealing with one of the most stringent um, chairmen in probably the history of the game in Daniel Livy, in that he will bleed every single pound, pence, dotted line, ink, paper, whatever he wants to scrimp on, he will scrimp on it. And if he wants to get as much of out of Harry Kane as possible, he will. And it will be immensely difficult to get Harry Kane shifted in the current climate with COVID and all this malava. Now, one of the strange things about the European Super League is, and I feel like I'm going to keep mentioning that over and over again in this video, but it is important, um, is that they apparently this 300 odd million they're getting um, as part of the deal to sign up for it is that they can't spend it on players. They've got to spend it on infrastructure or cutting debt down or helping local clubs or whatever. Whether that's to believe, believe not, I don't really know. To be honest, on my on my side of things, I don't really believe anything that that is coming out of people's mouths, especially the likes of Joe Glazer and Florentino Perez saying that it's going to help the smaller clubs. We're going to bring in ten billion and this, that, and the other. And it's kind of like, if it was that important, if helping smaller clubs was that important to you, surely you would have done it by now, and it wouldn't have taken you a year to give these English clubs thirty million to help when really that's a, like a, a teardrop in the middle of an ocean of what probably teams needed to help get through um but yeah it's it's a strange situation at Spurs um I know I've gone a bit of a tangent there with Harry Kane but the writing really was on the wall with Mourinho with some of the performances they've pulled out these past month this past month or two I mean going out the way they did in the Europa League Spurs were probably one of the favorites in the tournament beforehand and now are struggling to potentially be in the conversation for Europa League spots because, you know, it, there's a lot of competition in there. And even if West Ham don't make the top four, they're involved in, the, in that top seven conversation. Everton are in, in, are in, in and around there. So, you know, it's, it's not a given Spurs are going to be even involved in Europe next season. But with the squad they have, they really should be. Um, and it's unfortunate for Mourinho that he's got them through this pande pandemic and the turbulent period that he had to get them through, and then it's still not worked out for him as he probably would have hoped to. Um, but yeah, I mean, we have this every time with Mourinho, don't we? We have this cycle of... This one's a bit shorter probably than the previous cycles, where he usually has one or two good seasons, then the third season he throws the toys out the pram, and yada, yada, yada. But this season it's been... He started off pretty well, then got a got quite unlucky in the first season with his injuries, and then he obviously Spurs just fell away. Had a good run towards the end of the last season, and then started out the season quite well. But then problems started occurring. He had problems with Gareth Bale. He had problems with Delhi Alley, and you know it really did become the Mourinho circus all over again. So for me, I always thought that he was going to make it to the end of the season because. It didn't really matter where Spurs ended up. It didn't really make a difference at this point how he ended up because he got them to a trophy. Not to a trophy, sorry. To to a potential trophy by getting to the Carabao Cup final. And I think you can always give Mourinho the benefit of the doubt that for a one-off game, he can show up. He can get the team to just announce themselves for one game. And that if he was going to do it for one game, it's... It's for, a Car it's for a Carabao Cup and it's for a trophy that Spurs have desperately needed. And I think if they had got a trophy under Pochettino, there's a very good chance Pochettino would probably still be there because the team would have worked a lot better and wouldn't have probably had as big a slump as they did after the Champions League final defeat. But that's a conversation for another day. Um, the thing that's, that's particularly got to me, though, is the timing of it. It's the six days beforehand to the final as I mentioned before but it's also straight after the the ESL has been announced it's it reeks of Mourinho not knowing anything about it and not being impressed that it's happening and then that's probably why he's coming potentially if the reports are to be believed that is um, that he you know um, wasn't happy with the changes so he, he gave up on it um, and didn't want to you know run training this morning which is why it's led to Ryan Mason leading it. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting 
not just for the European Super League, but obviously to see where Mourinho goes from here, because really in terms of the Premier League, I don't really know what his options are. Um, but yeah, it's it's a bizarre one. Um, I don't really know where Mourinho could go from here, really. I mean, he could always go to like a, a PSG at some point in the future, again, following in Poch, but again, that, is, that, that job's not going to be there anytime soon with the way Poch is going. Um and if you if Poch wins the Champions League, he's probably getting a statue a bit outside. Um, in terms of what he could do next, maybe international football. Maybe after the Euros, he could go manage Portugal. Um, hell, who knows? England might be an option. Um, if Southgate doesn't stick around, or if Southgate doesn't go through the work next World Cup phase after the Euros finishes, because obviously we've got to finish that qualifying off and then go to the end of next year with the with the rest of the qualifiers and then do the World Cup in Qatar I think it's at the end of the year in December so yeah um, that's probably what's next for Mourinho um, if I was to say yes but again who knows if Newcastle get a takeover through at some point then he might he might have a bit of money to spend and go there I mean who knows um, I don't see it being one of these European Super Leagues because again if he's opposed to it which I strongly f- have a gut feeling he does then, yeah, I don't, I don't foresee him going into that league. And I think a lot of apparently there's reports that Klopp wants out as well. Um, so if Klopp does walk, that might be the exodus that starts from these uh, cl- twelve clubs that are involved and see what other happens with the players. Because if they are under jeopardy for their international places, are they really going to want to stick around in those clubs? Because if it was me, I certainly wouldn't. I would pick playing in the World Cup over anything else in my career it's the pinnacle of, of football you want to be involved in the World Cup you want to be involved in the Euros yes you want to be playing these bigger teams but not at the price of you know t- representing your country but that's just me I'm, a, I'm not a professional football player as you can probably tell um, but yeah I think I'll leave it there for that uh, for now um, if you did enjoy the video please give us a like share and subscribe and I'll catch you on the next one because no doubt this European Super League story is going absolutely nowhere. So I'll see you on the next one. Cheers, guys.